In wealthy Western countries, the Hare Krishna's austere monastic life appears strange and unappealing. Some wonder if they're really seeking a better life or hiding from reality. It's not a social club to come and meet the man of your life. It is actually a place where you come here to speak about the Lord. It's actually a temple and it's sacred. So you've got to just accept what is conducive to your spiritual life and reject what isn't. I was sort of practicing celibacy before I was a Hare Krishna anyway. It wasn't a new thing for me. I do miss the intellectual stimulus that a man can give, but they lack the, the softness that you can get from a woman also. Um, children, husband, oh goodness, I would, of course, I'd like to get married to a very special person, but if it doesn't happen, I just hope that my life is such that it's not a problem. The main requirement for becoming a Hare Krishna is one sincere spiritual interest, which means it's a simple meaning, Oh Lord, please let me serve you. And to follow four basic rules, no uh, eating of meat, fish, or eggs, no gambling, no intoxication, and no illicit sex life. If one can follow these four practices and regularly chant the Hare Krishna mantra every day and try to lead a saintly life, then he can become a devotee of Lord Krishna. I have a great relationship with my parents and we talk a lot and we discuss and debate and, and my father's always right <laughs> and um, in the end we always just agree to disagree, you know. But ultimately, ultimately I have complete faith that the longer I go in life, the more they will accept it because at the moment they just see me in an ashram, they don't understand that I'm going to get married, I may have children. You know, so many things. I still eat, sleep, you know. At the moment, they're just seeing a stylized view of their daughter. But when they start seeing that, actually, I'm just living life, you know. We've tried to change Kim's mind, but she's pretty set in her ways and uh, she won't listen to mum and dad. I believe in a God, so that's my wife, mm. we're Christians by background, so we're my children. Uh, we believe in doing the right thing. Um, we don't go to church on a Sunday and ask God to forgive us for all our wrongs and then go out and... I try not to do wrongs know, if I can. Do the wrong do thing again. We just it. do the right thing. We always do the right... We think we're doing the right thing. Well, this, we're trying to do the right thing. But, uh, well, we're trying to do the right that's thing. That's right. But no, we're not extremely religious, but on the other side, we're not... Uh, fanatics. Well, we would never be empty fanatics. No. But uh, we do believe in a, in a God. I don't believe in the extremes. 
where you forget all about today's life and all you do is because of tomorrow uh, somebody has promised you a better a better life tomorrow now you got to give this life some kind of a chance you got to live this life as well as the next one We start still think they look quite silly the when they chant and, the city and dance and, and, and uh, the robes and the shaven heads and very happy people but sort of no purpose. I want to be completely happy and the only way to be completely happy is to become more and more spiritually realized and actually to become more and more God conscious. God conscious means being aware of God's presence in every waking moment. Prabhupada's method of achieving this high spiritual state is the Hare Krishna chant. So, by chanting Hare Krishna, you are directly in contact with God. This is the meaning of Hare Krishna. In this century, many Indian gurus have come west to promote themselves and their philosophies. But measured in numbers, none have been as successful as Prabhupada. You guys want a really amazing book on reincarnation? Did you study that at school? No. No? So you don't, do you have any science lessons? Because this is scientific proof on reincarnation, life after death. Mm. Whoa. What, do you, what do you want to be in your next life? Never thought about it. <laughs> Hi there. Hi. You guys interested in meditation, yoga, anything like that? No. No? Sometimes I'm Never thought about you it. You do? You meditate? Pray. Yeah. You pray? Oh, that's nice of you to pray to, to Jesus. Yes, Jesus. That's lovely. Anyway, this is a book all about mantra meditation. It's very similar to prayer. Um, we're just handing these out today it's to all the boys from Randwick High. Hi. <laughs> How are you? Pretty good. Um, you're interested in yoga or new age philosophy? She in tried sense. to change our way of life, but <laughs> I think we're too old. We like our steak. And um, yeah, well, you always thought it will happen to somebody else, <laughs> not to no, no one in your own family, but it does. Uh, mm -hmm. Or to look um, deep down, well, according to Kim, at least they're all doing the right thing by others. They're helping, and as long as that's how it is, I don't mind it. I just wanted to become an extreme fanatic. Kim, we should really update your file. Um, photos first. Yes. Your hair is longer. Definitely, I know. Your hair is longer. There's another shot here. Also, we've got to update your biography. If, if a That's commercial comes up or if acting work comes up, I do that. Measurements. But I don't advertise McDonald's or anything like that. It's not like dribbling in your sleep life. You know, you've got to be conscious while you're living. You have to actually have a set of goals and go for it. And so I have a set of goals, you know. On Tuesday, I want you to, I want you to read the brief. It's for a character... Kim is saving for a trip to India. She considers India her true spiritual homeland even though her Australian background makes her a stranger to the poverty and the social upheaval which have spawned centuries of dedicated religious figures. Prabhupada was part of this tradition. In post-war India, he was barely surviving, sometimes unable to pay his bills. When one of his American disciples enthused that India must be the most important place in the world for preaching, Prabhupada corrected him, saying, it's the most important place in the universe. Money began pouring in and Prabhupada began selecting choice parcels of land from which to create his vision for a future God-conscious society. ISKCON expanded quickly and within a few years had spawned an assortment of imposing temples and schools throughout India and the world. By 1976, ISKCON membership had grown to over 100,000 in 40 countries, riding the wave of the New Age movement. 
Indian religious festivals were attracting throngs of devotees in most major Western cities. It appeared that Prabhupada was fulfilling Lord Chaitanya's prophecy of 500 years ago that the holy chant would be heard in every town and village in the world. All the while, Prabhupada remained quietly in the background, giving all credit to Krishna. As Iskon grew from strength to strength, Prabhupada grew visibly weaker. Everyone knew the time was near when the young disciples who lacked wisdom and spiritual depth would be forced to carry on without their master. The disciples absorbed what they could and Prabhupada continued translating scriptures to the very end. Everything is active, moving by the supreme desire of Krishna. Prabhupada's grace, even in the face of death, could be enough evidence of his spiritual authenticity. But the Hare Krishnas point proudly to their master's saintly lineage, which goes back 5,000 years to Lord Krishna himself. Krishna's teachings have been handed down by an unbroken chain of acharyas, distinguished masters who passed on the holy word for a hundred generations before the invention of writing. And it's this unbroken line of gurus upon which ISKCON bases its claim to authenticity. Before his death, Prabhupada tried to ensure the survival of his religious society by appointing eleven disciples to carry on the work. But the new gurus quickly disagreed about everything from clothing to philosophy. ISKCON's governing body soon had to remove six of them for sex, drugs and other scandals. For example, this man was jailed for machine gunning a car dealership in an alcoholic rage. This man conducted a public affair with a teenage girl while mismanaging ISKCON's multi-million dollar book business. People do not know what is ecstasy. Happiness in the material world means that there is material misery and you some, somehow or other you minimize it. The living entity is by nature an enjoyer. This man's outrageous personal life included a flaunted homosexual affair. In this material world is not the proper process. And Prabhupada was never under any illusion that he would remain forever in uh, this world with us. But he said, my instruction will remain. And he trained us from the very beginning to follow his instruction and to use our individuality to execute his instruction for the glorification of Krishna. This guru used his individuality to execute two of his enemies. His devotee hitman piously chanted the holy names while stabbing his victims. Many diverse problems erupted for Iskon when the disciples suddenly found themselves in positions of exalted power with no accountability. Those who fell from grace all had one thing in common, an inability to give up sex and other sense pleasures. Only through activities in relationship to Krishna. Sex desire and sex, illicit sex life is the most difficult thing to overcome anywhere in this universe. You personally found it difficult? Yeah, I fell down. I, I uh, engaged in illicit sex. I succumbed to my lusty desires by having sex with a man. And every action that you perform in this world has a reaction. And as a result, uh, we had to ask them, either they resigned or we had to ask them to, you know, leave their positions. I think I was very fortunate because I was immediately um, asked by Srila Prabhupada to take an active role in uh, leading our society, and I was always engaged fully, and I, I had no time to think like that. And after this whole incident, you know, where I could no longer continue in that position. And unfortunately, our society had no experience in 
how to deal with a devotee who is in a very high position, who can no longer remain in that position, they don't know really what to do with them. You know, what, what do you do with them? You know, what do you do with me? What ISKCON did was simply sweep their deposed leaders under the carpet. The Central Committee struggled to rebuild internal order while the devotees were kept occupied with bigger and better book promotions. The spiritual world, the soul, God and the future. These topics and more in the Srimad Bhagavatam, written 3,000 years before the Dead Sea Scrolls in the oldest language known to man, Sanskrit. Now in English at Hare Krishna centers everywhere. Any serious quest for Krishna consciousness must involve an odyssey to that distinctly Indian institution, the Guru. A Guru means one who has gained an enlightened spiritual state and who can help his followers achieve the same. The enlightened follower in turn becomes Guru and so the chain of teaching is handed down across the generations. The Guru phenomenon stretches back into India's ancient past providing the continuity with history which is so highly valued today. Now Kim's made her pilgrimage to Vrindavan to find out if she's ready to become initiated by the guru of her choice. I hope to be initiated by Chama Krishna Maharaj whenever he thinks I'm ready, if uh, I'm ever ready. I think he thinks that materially I'm okay but spiritually I'm a schlep so <laughs> we'll have to switch those two around. Part of the, the torment that I experienced after I left was the fact that I felt I had betrayed the trust of all these thousands of, of people who had put their faith in me. And actually I had. However, there was always Prabhupada and his books to heal that break in faith. sure that being a Hare Krishna is the best thing I could be in life because it makes the most sense to me. But I pray that I can stay in the body for the rest of my life. That may seem naive or whatever, but I really want to. In the holy city of Vrindavan, ISKCON carries on their tradition of giving free meals to the local community. Calling it an act of spiritual welfare, the practice is observed in every ISKCON center worldwide, showing how well the Hare Krishnas understand the politics of food. The consciousness tends to get absorbed into the food, like for example, you can tell the difference between uh, a, you know, something slapped together and a meal cooked by an Italian mama with lots of love. We don't eat meat, fish or eggs. We avoid garlic and mushrooms. I mean, there's sort of, there are some basic reasons why we avoid those. Garlic makes you really passionate. <laughs> with the Hare Krishnas, everything we do is conducive to the spiritual life, so even our diet's conducive. Now your spiritual name is Hara. The cultural expression of being a woman in the Hare Krishna movement is far more natural and conducive to the way a woman is anyway. It's a statement of being a, in a woman's body and actually relishing that rather than fighting it. Women are guru but they're guru to their children and that is just such an amazingly great responsibility. When I chant there is a feeling of great peace and a feeling of connection to God but also 
a feeling that he is a person and a separate entity and actually the relationship you have with him is so special and that all these things we do in life are just steps along the way back to Godhead. I think the one thing that people strive for in life is happiness and, and the point is, is I'm happy because life has meaning. That's the main thing. At the end of the day, life has meaning. Thousand for this? Yeah, I mean, it's beautiful. Do you have something like this for cheaper? That's nice. Beautiful color. We want men to be men and women to be women in this right. movement and then get all that out of the way yeah. so that then we can move on to spiritual exactly. matters exactly. because in the West there's so much how to be a man, how to be a woman and actually that's not the importance. For many young Westerners, dissatisfied with Christianity and materialistic values, the attraction of the East lies in its promise of enlightenment, a simpler life and a personal relationship with a guru and with God. A lot of us have taken drugs, a lot of us have had lots of sex life, a lot of us have done business or whatever you can do. And because we became tired of, of that, because that is material life and it's not satisfying to just live out and satisfy the senses because they can't be satisfied at no stage. So that's why we were looking for something which would satisfy us, you see. And then we found Krishna, that's right. That little blue boy. <laughs> <laughs> this guru will be leading many followers like Kim, but to where? Back to Godhead or to an elaborate escape? At the time of death, the soul leaves the body and according to the activities which we have performed in this life, the soul takes a new body. If you make your activities God conscious and you remember the Lord at the time of death, then your soul will be transported back to the kingdom of God. On the other hand, if you have more worldly desires, then you take another birth according to those desires. It may not be as a human. You have to you know, form a relationship with a guru, find somebody that you really feel that you can have such, a, such an important relationship. It's more important than even who you marry as your guru. It's an eternal relationship. She deserves to be happy. Look, so far she's very happy. She's very contented. She could have been doing a lot of other things that young people do these days, such as drugs and, and, and God knows what else. So, Hare Krishna or no Hare Krishna, it's still better than many other things. I just want to say, if somebody thinks we're brainwashed, open your eyes a little. Yeah, Don't funny. just make such a, a generalization about who and what we are. At least take the time to see what we're all about, and not just us. Check out what black people are like, and Muslims, yes. and, and, and all different walks of life, and see for yourself. The more you chant Krishna, 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 the more deeply satisfied you become. And one of the byproducts is that you lose your taste for material, mundane pleasures, and you develop spiritual taste. Actually, I'd like to be old right now, so that it's all in the past. And I'm actually beginning to enjoy the fruits of the initial austerities. And I hope, and I pray, I pray that I can stay a devotee for the rest of my life. One of Prabhupada's own prayers reads, O oh Lord, I am just like a puppet in your hands. So if you have brought me here to dance, then make me dance. Make me dance, O oh Lord. Make me dance as you like. Krishna, 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 Hare Krishna.